Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Many of you have been asking me on all sorts of social media platforms, direct messaging throughout the years. We've never really approached this topic because I thought it was kind of like self-explanatory, but apparently it isn't. The question that I've been asked many a time is, what is the difference or is there an actual difference between expensive perfumes and cheaper perfumes. By that we mean, you know, drugstore perfumes compared to, let's say, some niche brand perfumes like, for example, Frederick Mull, as opposed to Curious by Britney Spears. Um, I, you know, yes, there is a difference. There's a difference, but there's also a difference between main release fragrances from really high-end fashion brands, fashion houses that also have fragrance and cosmetic departments, and their own niche releases. Like, let's say, mass mass product release Dior perfumes are different in quality to the Maison Dior fragrances. The Les Exclusives Chanel fragrances should have a different quality to the mass release Chanel fragrances. Um, but what does this mean? Well, Technically, what it should mean is that the world has limited amounts of resources and raw ingredients and materials, certain types of flowers, of resins, of things that, you, that they need to use for these perfumes are limited. There's only a certain amount that can be harvested and then you got to wait for new plants to grow, for new ingredients to be harvested from whatever type of source they come from. But... Since uh, population on this world is growing exponentially, there's more and more and more of us and less and less of us die. Uh, we consume more and more and more. It's all a bubble that is going to burst sooner or later. But what does this mean? This means that, have you noticed it actually? Every year, more and more perfumes are brought out on the market. Some are discontinued, but there's more coming out than is being discontinued. And um, everything is pushing more towards artificial, artificial and artificial ingredients. And these cheaper uh, fragrances usually use the biggest amount of artificial ingredients that can be quickly produced and manufactured in laboratories. Um, they're almost like, pff, you could call it like a sort of a memory of what a natural ingredient would smell like, or you could say it's, um, a faded version of what a more noble ingredient would smell like. So, um, for example, uh, when Dita Fontis created her range of perfumes, I don't think they're available anymore. Uh, they were sold in drugstores, very cheap. I don't know, 10 bucks, $9, maybe even less. Um, they're screechy the balance of the notes how the ingredients harmonize together since a lot of them are also artificial they don't blend into one another but each one stays separate in their own kind of little cubicle and house and they don't really blend in with the skin very well with your own organic hormones and your own essential oils so everything kind of screeches everything is slightly off and if you have a very well-developed nose, and you can only have a very well-developed nose if you smell a lot of fragrances, the same thing goes for wine, people who taste wine. You know, the more they, they taste and the more the palate gets attuned and refined to kind of sense out the different nuances and tones and notes or whatever you want to call them within wine. Same goes for coffee. you got to learn to appreciate coffee. The palate needs to learn to understand the taste of coffee. The first time you taste coffee, you ain't going to like it. It's going to be this bitter mess without any sugar, pure coffee. Um... A similar thing happens with, with fragrances, you know, that's why the cheapest fragrances from the biggest houses nowadays tend to be sweet because by cheapest, I don't mean in price cheapest, but I mean the quickest to produce mass selling, but not good in quality. So cheap in terms of you really low ingredients used to maximize profits as much as possible by selling them at a huge markup, despite the fact that the quality isn't there. So, you know, the sweet chulies, most of them, classic example. Why do they sell so well? Because they're sweet, because our palate is used to sweet. Everybody likes sweet, so the perfume industry figured that one out. Wow, aren't we clever? And then, you know, top notes immediately, sweet bomb. It's an explosion of sugar. 
and and you in in your brain you click immediately and you go oh yeah I like this it smells sweet it's nice oh it smells so like safe and and, and then you go for it but that's cheap to me even though it's really expensive so what I'm trying to say here by that I don't know I'm looking at you uh, I know you're gonna hate me now but I'm not a fan of of black opium uh, Yves Saint Laurent or La Nuit de l'opium black or whatever it's called it, it's it's like a bomb of sweetness. Um, it's one of the reasons I don't like the opening notes of Poison Girl by Dior, even though the dry down there is much more elegant than the opium version, uh, black opium version. But these sweet chulis, they sell them for a really huge markup because they come from these huge brands, but they're cheap. So they could have, they're, they're cheap in quality. They could have also been produced that way, maybe even cheapened down even more for drugstores, similar. So what I'm trying to say here is there are big name perfumes out there. You got to know how to distinguish them. You got to educate and train your palate to sense this out. There are certain fragrances out there that really don't cost much to produce, but they have a big name attached to them. So they're sold for a really big price. And then you have no name fragrances uh, from drugstores that are sold at a low cost, but the ingredients are cheap anyway could be more or less comparable to the big name brands mass produced. Although still, when we're talking about Dior Yves Saint Laurent, they still have a higher level quality than a drugstore perfume for sure. You still sense out the difference and you also notice the longevity is usually higher, especially with the Dior fragrances, super high with the mass release ones, not their uh, Maison Dior, uh, which is a totally different story. There the ingredients really smell out different. Um, so there is a difference between the drugstore perfumes and the mass released, uh, major brand perfumes. And then there's also a difference between the ma mass released major brand perfumes and the more limited and quantity released niche fragrances from the famous brands. We're talking about Maison Dior. We're talking about Les Exclusives from Chanel. We're talking about the Louis Vuitton, uh, fragrance range. We're talking about Hermes Sans, uh, from Hermes. We're talking about the, um, I think they've blended them all into one, but they had two separate lines by Yves Saint Laurent for their exclusives. And we're talking also about uh, the Dolce Gabbana special releases, still produced by Euro Italia, but sold only in their boutiques and some special um, counters as well. And, you know, you get the gist. That's how it goes. Um, now, the amount of perfume produced uh, from these famous niche houses is smaller in quantity than the amount of perfume that they, that they produce for the mass markets. But you got to also understand that usually the marketing, uh, the money that goes into marketing, into marketing, <laughs> the money that goes into the marketing to market these fragrances, the mass released ones, the cost is huge. So they have to produce an exorbitant amount of, this fra of these fragrances, mark them up as much as possible and sell them all because they got to get the billions back in that they spent in marketing the fragrances. They don't spend that coin on their niche fragrances, like the Les Exclusives and the Maison Dior. They don't do promotion for that. They don't do advertisements on television for that. They, they're niche, you know, they do minimal amount of uh, promotion and they expect uh, the consumer to, you know, word of mouth propaganda basically is what it is. Then you get, you know, suckers like me who love certain niche, <laughs> and then I talk about them. I'm not sponsored by them. I just love them so much. That's a form of free advertisement that they get, basically. Duh, loser me who has to pay for them and give them free advertisement in return. Oh, well, we shall live to see another day anyway. Um, and then you have the niche niche brands that are not famous, that don't have a name for themselves. They don't have a Dior on their back uh, to be able to sell their niche uh, products, but they have to kind of battle their way through this very competitive uh, terrain of, of fragrances all over the world. And that's really difficult because a lot of them really have to figure out where to re where to get their raw materials from because a lot of these places where you could get raw materials from they work only with the major uh, major major players that can also invest major amount of money into harvesting certain things. So same thing goes in fashion. If you're really just a beginner fashion brand and you're trying to build, you know, you're trying to find a factory to produce your, your garments to, to, to sell you the fabric, it's really hard sometimes because you're many a time you're going to get, especially in France, you're going to get in these like close to Paris, all these ateliers, these little factories, really hard to get their information to begin with. When you get their information, you try contacting them, they're going to tell you, oh, no, no, we don't have time for you, boo. We work only for the major league. 
um, similar happens in, in, in fragrance. So if you are, not, you know, you're trying to build up your, uh, your fragrance house, you want to create a fragrance, it's not easy to get the good quality raw materials to begin with because a lot of these raw material suppliers, they're not going to want to work with you because you're nobody. So that also plays a major role when it comes to the quality of fragrances. So we have to also respect, you know, these really small perfume houses that try really hard to bring something onto the market. They also have to play by the game. You know, the sweet things, the ouds are everywhere. Every niche fragrance has to have a freaking oud in it. I'm so sick and tired of ouds. But that, that was a huge tendency. I'm hoping that it's dying out. In my book, it's already dead. But the world still needs to catch up a year or two. Just like with the saddlebag, Maria Grazia Cutie. I'm looking at you, girl. We were wearing it years before you, uh, you know, had this brilliant idea to steal it from John Galliano and bring it back, whatever. Don't even get me started on her. But, um, yeah. So, yes, there is a difference between these drugstore cheap perfumes and mass-released perfumes and mass-released big house perfumes and mass... Uh, and big house perfumes, niche perfumes, their niche perfumes, and the niche perfumes that don't have a brand. There is a quality difference between all of them. But... The major difference is in marketing. If a brand brainwashes you and bombards you with commercials and advertisements about their fragrance, their fragrance can have the crappiest quality, but it's still going to sell because they invested the most money in selling it. That's how the world ticks. That's why you have to be very clever and um, exercise your palate, exercise your nose, and learn more and more and more about it. What smells good to you? on you in combination with your essential oils, with your skin, with your uh, hormones. And with time, you will, uh, you know, you will fine tune your palate and you will figure out what works for you. And sometimes, yes, even a drugstore perfume can work really well with your own chemistry. Sometimes a uh, really expensive niche fragrance it works horribly with your chemistry. So in terms of what works for your nose, it doesn't really matter uh, if it's a $10 fragrance or a $500 fragrance. The ingredients in the $500 fragrance might be more expensive to source out. But again, that doesn't mean that that ingredient suits you, you know. Diamonds are artificially hyped. There's so many diamonds in the world, but we're, we're kind of brainwashed into thinking that they're so expensive and, you know, they're a girl's and a boy's best friend. Um, no, they're not. And that's just what the industry is lying to us. And so we're kind of brainwashed to think that diamonds are really expensive. They're not. There's so many of them in this world. So, um, you know... It's all about marketing. And I'm marketing to you now the concept of um, freeing yourselves from the chains of marketing. I'm promoting freeing yourself from the chains of marketing. Cling! Free. Smell what you want to smell and learn to smell out what you love. You know? Um, because ain't no brand marketing... Uh, that can really, you know, if you're really strong enough to fight against it, there ain't no brand marketing out there that can brainwash you into loving something you just ain't meant to love. Having said that, I say never give up on love. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together. If you wish to help the channel see it grow quicker, you could pledge a little tiny, uh, you know, Patreon pledge. Uh, it, all, it, it begins at $1, literally, and then it goes up to $5. But you could pledge as many times as you want. Special videos only available there, as well as photos, and a lot of topics that we talk about also over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll repeat it again, because I'm never tired of repeating it. Never give up on love. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.